So, with every new edition of Warhammer, the poster boys and girls of a game system need a dance partner. And here in third, we welcomed a new batch of fantasy orcs. Or as it pains me to say, Oryx. My name is Benji, and this is the guide to starting your Oryx Warclans collection and building your first army. Today we'll be concocting your first 750 points in not one, but two differing themes giving you a shove in the right direction and leaving you more brain power and free time for the gluing and painting of things. So third edition and you've really got two entry points for army sizes. 600 points where you start your path to glory aka narrative play journey and 750 which is today's round number of choice because that's the lowest recognized points limit for match play. Either way, this breakpoint will have you covered. So, to the two themes. Well, I did say a batch of new orcs, so it would be absolutely batshizzle for us not to build a cruel boys list to show off all the new stuff. And then, because the cult of the new needs to be brought down a peg or two, we'll also be crafting an assortment of tried and tested old school models. But before we go onward mound, please do take a moment to subscribe to the channel to keep yourself in the bubble of awesome and smash that like button to help a guy out. By virtue then of complete randomness, let's start proceedings with the Cruel is the new Cool build. And much like every army it needs a general, and here with the second longest name in your ranks is a killer boss on Great Nashtooth. The signature leader found in the Dominion box and now part of a multi-piece kit is big, beefy and mobile all in one. In fact he's pretty beginner friendly across the board, with a 10 inch move and 10 wounds it granted doesn't benefit from lookout sir, but what it does do is swing with 8 attacks, all at 2 damage apiece and a healthy rend to boot. Oh, and if you bring a unit of cruel boys up the battlefield with him, he'll ensure said units only lose one model at most in the Battleshock phase. Pure vanilla goodness. But that's not the only leader we're packing, as alongside the killer boss is his buddy the Merc Knob with Belcher Banner. Not my first choice, more on that anon, but still a capable leader in his own right doing a competent job in close combat with 3 2 damage attacks and 6 wounds. But it's his anti-spell capabilities that see him nullifying spells targeting friendly nearby models and the dishing out of mortal wounds to enemy units within 3 inches that give him multiple strings to his bow. Very quickly then we opted for this old knob because A he comes in that multi-part kit with the killer boss and we're all about the efficient use of money, and B, our preferred choice, the Swamp Caller Shaman and Potgrot, is still not sold separately outside the Harbinger starter set. The Shaman not only brings you wizarding shenanigans, but also dishes out poisons and elixirs to friendly crawl boys that either improve their mortal wounding venom encrusted weapons or boost their armor save. An absolutely beautiful unit that you should grab if you can. Detours aside then, it's battle line time, and we've got really, really creative with our choice of two units of ten gut rippers, the rank and file of a cruel boy's army. Two wounds is nice, but they're not as cheap as chips as you might think, and with two attacks apiece with your army-wide venom-encrusted weapons dishing out mortal wounds on hit rolls of six, they're as competent as you'd hope for when taking dudes on the table units. Not only that, their scare tactics can charge a unit and then be the right 2d6 roll away from nerfing the enemy's hit rolls for the remainder of the turn. And one piece of free consumer advice while we're here, do pick up the Warrior Starter Set, which has some nice accessories alongside 10 of the Gut Rippers you need. A killer boss with Stabgrot and some Stormcast Eternals if you're into that type of thing for basically the same price as the standalone box of Rippers. Which leaves us with just a three man unit of man skewer bolt boys, a fairly nifty range unit that you wish you had a bigger unit of to crank out more two damage shots. But despite the two wounds and six up armor save, this unit is still capable of thinning out your opponent's ranks before things get up close and personal. 
This is definitely the unit you need to try and keep alive for at least a couple of turns. And there are more than a couple of tricks in the battle time to help you in this endeavour. And there you have your 745 points of Bullcroys. Yes, if you're able to pick up the Swamp Caller Shaman, this adds up to a, don't tell anyone, 755 points. But just offer your opponent an ice cream after the game and all will be well. This list gives you a bit of variety as you welcome your new mudskins to the theatre of war. With mounted units and ranged, you get some flexibility and then your gut rippers doing their foot slogging thing. This is a nice and tidy start to your army. We then move to our old, isn't actually that old, build of Iron Jaws. And no self-respecting crew of armour boys would come without its very own Auric Megaboss. Because although it's got less wounds and is a darn sight slower than the Cruel Boys Killer Boss, it does a comparable amount of damage. Can issue a command ability to two units instead of one, and gets one more swing at bat with his chopper, even if he's slain before he's called up to the plate. And this is the fun bit. For every model he slays, he gets an extra wound and an extra attack, so long as he survives the remainder of the combat phase. That is some sweet cheddar gravy. If you can ride that bunker's ability like a wave, then this guy will pay his points cost back in no time. Once again, identifying the need to have a second leader to act in a lieutenant type role, we bring in an Auric War Chanter to spread his almighty buffing goodness across the land. Seriously, this guy is a make others better walking, stalking orc Santa Claus, giving the gift of a myriad of abilities to your Iron Jaws buddies. Whether it's picking units, and yes, that can be plural if you pick the right clan, to add one to their damage characteristics, and picking one of three war beats that either dish out heals, allow a unit to charge 3d6, or add one to their hit rolls in combat. Now fair enough you can only pick one of those for the duration of the battle, but still you rarely get this much utility in a secondary leader. Oh, and he's not a complete duffer in combat either. Battle line choices next, and I'd ask you to cast your minds back to the Cruel Boys, where we got uber creative with our troops, and I'm pleased to say that we're doing exactly the same in this list, with one unit of a reinforced 10 Auric Ard Boys, and two more units of 5. In part because of the reinforcement restrictions at this battle size, but as well because it gives you a bit more versatility in your table presence. So, do they do anything out of the ordinary? Uh no, you'd have to look at their battle line brother Brutes unit for that. But like most Orc armies, they need decent weight of numbers to get the job done. If you couple that with 3 attacks per model, and a not terrible 2 wounds and 4 up save, this is already looking like a smart move. The fact that they can return slain models using the rally command ability on a 4 up instead of a 6 up, and 2 in every 5 models can have a shield that gives them a 6 up ward, means that these aren't as paper thin as orcs of the distant past. I should say at this point, and it wasn't initially intentional, that this list contains all the models that can be found within the imprint as I speak these words, start collecting Iron Jaws box. So don't say that Uncle Benji don't think of your wallet when the stars align. Which is my long way of saying that a unit of three Auric Gore Grunters rounds out this here build bring in some much needed mobility to an otherwise foot sloggy army composition. With 5 wounds and a 4 up save making them tough enough, you basically point these at an enemy unit, dish out some mortal wounds at the end of the charge, and throw a bunch of attacks at the enemy, albeit only at 1 damage apiece. But you do remember the war chanter, plus 1 damage ability right? Enough said. And that was and is 745 points of old but not grey haired yet orcs. The biggest knock on these guys is their lack of mobility. And at one point I did want to bring a weird knob shaman that could have helped a little bit with that. But they'll have to be what bigger army sizes are for. That lets us take three bleeding leaders. On the flip side though, the raw damage output and table presence at this breakpoint is considerable. Both your leaders are really, really good. 
and there ain't a dud unit to be seen anywhere on the roster. As for the fiscal cost of both armies, there is very little to choose between them. None of these sprues provide particular value for money in their standalone boxes, but because you can pick up the Warrior starter set and even the Harbinger starter set, which will get you the second unit of Gut Rippers, the Swamp Caller Shaman we talked about, and some Hobgrot Slitters for future proofing in the Crawl Boys list, and because you can pick up the Stark Collecting set for the bulk of the Iron Jaws, well then you actually revisited Value Town with some cash to spare, no matter which path you choose. That does though signal the end of this first chapter of Auric War Clan's army building. The variety on offer across the Orc range really is a welcome sight in 3rd edition, and we didn't even touch on what the savage bone splitters can bring to your table. Alas, I have been the voice of Benji, and this video has ended. <laughs>